What's going on? Oh, turn on, need to turn on the light. Pants confirmed. What is going on? So I'm just trying to work on my, uh, getting all sorts of messages here. Um, from my son. All right. Thank you, Ed. Oh, it, it's, uh, it's just this, um, it's technically student repertoire. It's sad. Depressing as that sounds. It's like, dang it. That's, it's like the first piece in this book and it's like insane uh and it's really long i mean i'm not it's gosh it's i'm, not, I'm just on the first page it's it's t eight pages long or ten pages long I was like, holy cow yeah i mean i'm just kind of reading through it it's um so it's this book here and uh i mean i don't know if the, it's progressive the thing that's hard about flamenco is like that piece is not bad because it's it's uh, it's in four four. Um, oh, I can't talk right now. Um, and um, <clears throat> um, yeah, and then but then when you get to like Alegrias, like this piece, so that's the name of the piece, and this is the style. Uh, that it is, the rhythm that it is. When you get to those kind of things where it's the different regions have different rhythms and it's it's hard to keep track of. I mean, you can even see, like, there's, like here, this bar is, that's just, no, you know, it's a whole bar. That's one bar right there. So, and it's all broken down into this pulse that if you didn't grow up in that region listening to that nonstop, you probably would never... You know, I haven't even looked at this one, but, uh, you know, it's like. Oops. See. And I've heard. Oh, I see. Actually, I was, it's, a, it's major. I was playing minor. I'm sure it's like it's like stupid fast so um, it's beautiful beautiful music and it's like I've said before when I studied classical guitar you know I remember being really frustrated particularly with my right hand um, uh, I, I actually got to be a guitar major um, but in at Butler but it was I got in based on my left hand the, when I because you had to do audition And the uh, guitar professor, the, the only guitar professor they had at the, you know, they had, and he was at the audition. He goes, yeah, your right hand is awful, but your left hand got you in the school. <laughs> so my left hand chops got me in the school, but I, he, my, everything I was doing with my right hand was, was, uh, was incorrect. So, I, you know, there were so many times where uh, I, he'd go, okay, I want you to arch your hand like this, right? Classical. I'm talking about my right hand here. And, um... I, it would start to collapse, and I'd start to go all Chet Atkins, you know. And he'd grab my hand and bend my wrist, and I'd be like, dang it, and yeah, I lost the track. And it would slowly get back down, he'd grab it, he'd face it, a whole year. That's, was, that describes my first year of college, was my professor just bending my wrist and trying to keep it, uh, keep it in proper technique. Um, 
And then the other problem was for me was keeping my nails long because I was a nail biter. So it was real tough to not bite my nails for the first semester. And because as soon as you lost your nail, you get no tone. Um, but classical guitar is all, like I said, is all pulling, right? It's all grabbing. And uh, so that's, you know, once you get that down and once you've been doing it for a long time, it's like, okay, it's pretty natural. It feels good. Uh, but when, and I'm leaving the uh, Reasons to Capo up, um, we're going to talk about, we're going to do different, uh, we're going to do, I don't know how many positions we're going to do, um, but, uh, uh, but uh, um, we'll pro we may only do one, we'll see, because uh, I want you to, the goal here is that we are going to, this, this does not apply. There is going to be a quiz. Does anybody see my, there won't be a quiz on this mug. Isn't that awesome? You can order one uh, on uh, my YouTube channel. And I just think it'd be funny. It's just funny having a conversation with your spouse and, you, you know. <laughs> and then later when you say, don't you remember that I told you that? And she said, but your, your cup said there wouldn't be a quiz on this. And you're like, oh, I got to throw that cup away. <laughs> so I'm really not a good salesman for my products here. Uh, and then I think uh, the, the, another one I'm going to have is going to have a little guitar on and say, don't worry, there won't be a quiz on this. Um, or maybe fret not, which is just silly. Or don't fret, there won't be a quiz on this. You know, That's a dad joke. Uh, but then flamenco guitar, so classical guitar is all grabbing. Flamenco guitar, flamenco guitar is uh, not flamingo, but flamenco, flamenco. Um, is flicking and pushing like this. It's like, I, I'm sure you've all been to the gym, and I don't know if you ever had, like you weight lifted, if you ever did weight lifting at the gym, um, or machines, Nautilus machines, things like that. I remember, you know, there was like, there would be all sorts of different ways you could approach it, right? You could do, okay, I'm going to do legs today, I'm going to do arms tomorrow, and then I'll do core. Legs, arms, core, legs, arms, core. Or you might do core every day and do alternate between legs and arms. Or for a while there, I was doing all the pulling exercises, okay, the curling, the leg curls, all that stuff, all, whether it was core, you know, the, the crunch machine, wh whatever it was, I did all the pulling exercises one day, and then the next day I would do all the pushing exercises. So the bench press and, you know, the leg press and all those different exercises, and clearly I haven't been to the gym in a long time. Um, but, um, who has, um, uh, so, you know, you would mix it up and boy, you know, you would feel it, but it was a nice thing was you would kind of, you would spread the pain around a little bit. And so that's the thing about flamingo guitar. It's like, I mean, I love this little passage. Uh, was it? Uh, to, it was took me forever to get that down, and because it's it's one of those things where it's it's weird to do slow, and you don't think you're ever going to get it fast. It's not like, and you'll notice it's five notes. So it's uh, eighth note is two notes in a beat, sixteenth um, note is four notes, four sixteenth notes in a chord in a beat. But these are fives, grouped into fives. So these are five sixteenth notes in one beat. So it's three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I saw your videos, uh, Pepper, of your teacher. That was cool. He's got good technique. Raschiato. Yeah, uh, Raschiato. I think. Um, and there's other, there's all, sorts of, there's all sorts of different kinds of, all sorts of different kinds of rascados that have different sounds. Like it, this is a triplet one. I can't do it slow. It's really weird. It's thumb up, pinky down, first finger down. It's hard enough, and then you got to do stuff on your left hand. It's like, oh, forget it. <laughs> it's 
and that's a triplet. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So there's a lot of this one is triplet two. And I can do that one really fast. Um, but it's a different sound than this one. So you know, because of the combination of different fingers or thumbs or hands or whatever. Um, and then like and then there's another style in that's probably in here is probably a rumba. Yep. There's one rumba. So there's a faruca, which was that one I was playing. Alegrias cigarillas cigarillas, not cigar cigarettes, but so so soliares rumba colombiana tarantas gert so so the honest, these are all literally, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different song styles and ten different songs. So he wrote ten songs in ten different flamenco song styles. Um, and uh, they all come, most of them come from different, like, in fact, was there a Granados? Did I say Granados? There was not a Granados, so he didn't do a Granados. But Granados is a city in, in Andalusia, Spain, which is a like south uh, west Spain, and I've never been there. I've been to Barcelona, but that's it, Barcelona, which I loved. Um, and I would love to go. I think I think that would be probably a trip I would take in the future, is to Andalucia, um, to go to all those regions. So I'd probably have to rent a car and drive, which I'm not looking forward to in Europe. But um, uh, but it would be nice to see all those different regions and 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 hear the music in all of them because it's it's really fascinating that. You know that the, the um, area, every area kind of has its own song form. Um, thank you for the happy birthday. Oh, uh, look at the chat. Let's see. Let me, let me. Uh, not this chat. You're talking about. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about capo in here in a second. Margaret, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, let's, see who's, let's see who's here. Pepper's here, of course. Uh, Roger, Bonnie. Uh, and by of course, I don't mean like, well, of course she's here. No, I mean like I've already acknowledged you, so that's it's silly for me to say you're here. Diane's here. Oh, Diane, I've got you. You have to remind. What's the story I'm supposed to tell today? Oh, the Fernando story, right? Yes. Okay, the, I remember now. Hopefully, I'll remember it at the end of the lesson. But like I said, this one's a story you probably all have your own story about. Which you're like, what does that mean? Hey, Jamie, what's going on? Good to see you. Bob Schumann, uh, Ed, thank you, Ed, for the birthday wish. Jim Horst, good to see you. Uh, Jan, good to see you. Bruce is here. Uh, everybody's saying hi to each other. Uh, mm, hey, Margaret, thank you for the birthday wish. Yeah, Jamie, I'll tell you, the classical guitar thing, I mean, I'll tell you why I'll never be a classical guitarist, because I have a lousy memory for music. I cannot memorize music. And, I mean, if you can memorize and play the Bach Chaconne, then okay. But even then, it's like, how many famous classical guitarists are touring the world and doing shows? It's like, not many. And I met um, Christopher Parkin, and I had dinner with him uh, at a friend's house. Uh, my friend knew that I, I really liked Christopher Parkin. It was kind of one of my big early influences when I was a kid. And um, uh, I met him and, it, you know, he, he retired at 30. I mean, he made so much money he could retire at 30, but he was completely burned out. Um, and the reason um, I met him and is because he, uh, I don't think he's there anymore. Or he may still be there, but I don't think he lives there anymore. But uh, he's an adjunct professor at Pepperdine. And so he, they have housing for professors there, and my friend is a, is a uh, on staff there too, and he's got a, uh, a house at Pepperdine in Malibu, and um, great, you know, it's amazing because they got great views. It's like on the ocean; you can't, it's, it's, you can't beat it. It's worth the job doing any job to have that living situation. And Christopher Parkin was in one of those houses as well, so he, he, they had him and his wife over for dinner, and so the six of us had dinner. And it was, it was really fun. He had some amazing stories. He had some amazing stories. The um, uh, I, the one of the crazy stories was that he had a um, one of the things he got. Oh, hey, Kate, 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Armin, how's it going? Thank you, Armin. You're very welcome. Um, he had... Um, I'm going to switch guitars so we can all take a drink. Um, and let's capo at the third fret, okay? Um, let me get, grab that tuner. Um, he had a cougar. And uh, like a real... Because he, cause he had a ranch in Montana. Like that, when he... He got burned out. Like he had one of those stage dads that just, you know, stage mom, but it was a dad that just made him work and work and work and work and work from a little kid on, you know, and I don't know. I forget if he like hates his dad. I can't remember. I got, I got his biography and read it. Uh, it was very interesting. Um, it was fairly interesting. Biography, autobiographies are tough. You know, because you're not generally not a good writer, you have to hire a ghost writer and all that. But um, he, uh, but th this wasn't in the book. But he told the story at dinner that uh, he had this cougar, and it was completely tame, but it was a full size cougar, so it was very large, like kind of like a female lion size, but not that big around, but you know, more lanky, but big. Like if it stood up on its hind legs, it was your height. Could put his arms on your shoulders. And his paws on your shoulders, and he would be taller than you. That's how big he was. And Chris never told anybody that he had him. So when people came over to visit, they'd go walking around, he'd show them around. Because he brought a, bought a ranch that had um, a stream running through it. And he went from being the, one of the world's most renowned classical guitarists to being a world champion fly fisher. Like, he can't, he can't do anything half fast. Half fast, I said, half fast. Full fast. He has to go full fast. <laughs> and um, so he, he, he just got into fly fishing and became really, really good at it. And so he bought a property that had a stream running through it so he could fly fish all the time. And so he'd have a friend over and, and the friend would see, uh, you could tell that the friend could see the, the cougar in the distance. Like he, uh, Chris would have his back to the, to the cougar, right? And uh, way out, you know, the cougar would be way out, you know, like half a mile away, but, the, you know, big enough. And you could see it and you're like, oh my gosh, that's a wild animal. And then as it gets closer, it started running because it was saw Chris and it would run to Chris. And <laughs> people would, he, Chris is lovely because he would watch people's eyes just get really big, like, oh my. <laughs> and then Chris would turn around and they'd just be, they would just hug. Yeah, kitty, 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 exactly. It would just tackle Chris and they just hug. It never hurt him ever once. Was... He probably has some stories online about it. You know, I'm sure he's told. And I'm probably telling the story completely wrong. You know how it is. We... I've had people tell stories about me and I'm with that, something that they that I did or something. And I'm like, either that wasn't me or you remember this completely different than I do. I don't know. <laughs> flat six, flat seven, one, right? We learned that. All right, so. Um, again, like uh, like I hope I say correctly, um, when I say um, shape, I mean what it looks like. And when I say chord, I mean what it actually is. So this is a B flat chord, but it's a G shape, right? All right, so play the G shape here with the capo at the third fret, and that is B flat, right? <clears throat> um, this is, if you play an E chord, that's G. Right? And you can see that if you know bar chords, you're going, oh wait, that is G. All right? Now there's another thing that will save you a lot of time when you, uh, with capoing. You don't really need to worry about the suffix. The suffix stays the same. And you're like, wait, what do you mean suffix? Well, if it's G minor seven, if this, or this is an E minor seven, um, then you have to change the E part of it, but the minor seven part stays the same. So 
If I played, you know, this shape in open position, it would be E minor seven. Or if I played, let's just do it, keep it simple. One finger, second fret, okay? And when I say second fret, I mean second fret in front of the bar or the capo, okay? I'm not gonna say fifth fret, that just gets too confusing. So if you were to tab music here, you would say, if you went like this, you would have nothing but zeros. You wouldn't say three, 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 no. You would put zeros and then at the top, you would say capo, um, capo third fret. Now, uh, that could also apply to music. You could write music that way. Ultimately, I still prefer you to know what the proper chords um, are. And I think, like I said, that will provide, that will, that will pay dividends. Um, on, on so many levels, okay? It will make it a lot easier to transpose. It'll make it, a, it, it'll add to your knowledge of the fretboard. And that's one of the most important things you can do as a guitar player is to learn all the notes on your frets, but it's just, or all the fret, all the notes on your guitar neck. Um, but the best way to do that is just through added knowledge and not through like sitting down and just doing it. It's not like when you were in seven years old and had to learn your multiplication or your addition tables or whatever, you know, you just, you just plain old memorize those. Um, if you waited for the time you needed to know what eight times seven was to add that to your knowledge, you probably wouldn't know it. So yeah, there are times where you just have to sit down and memorize a bunch of stuff, but that's, those days are largely behind us. Um, and <laughs> once you get to be an adult, it, everything's need to know is <laughs> like, do I really need to know this? And it, most of the time the answer is nah. You know, <laughs> most of the time the answer is, oops, there we go. And you can order this now at my YouTube channel. I just think that's awesome. I love that. I think it worked out good. I mean, I just kind of took the font that came with it. Unfortunately, I couldn't do, they only had left a line, which I thought was funny. It's like I couldn't go right a line or center a line or any of that. It's just like they had no options in there. But with the new one, what I did was I, um, I think I did center and I just created a JPEG and imported it as a JPEG and then that was easy, so. Um, so there's your B flat chord. G shape, B flat chord, okay? Now, here's what I mean by prefix, okay? If I put my first finger down here on the third string, second fret, that's a G, that would be a G2 shape, but it's actually B flat too. So the prefix changed, but the suffix, the, the, the type of chord it is, did not change, okay? If I did this, okay? So if I did this, and I'm gonna go ahead again, I'm gonna write this out as if it was an open position. So it's gonna be three X, zero, zero, three, two, okay? That, at, at the third fret, well, that's, that's a G, and I use my little triangle. It probably won't show up, so I'm gonna write M-A-J because I don't know if you guys can see the triangle. Uh, so that's a G major seven, but at the capo of the third fret, that would be B flat major seven, okay? So all of that major seven part doesn't change. We just call it a B flat major seven. So just know that, like, we, I love this chord. Um, in, in open position, it would be three X again, zero, three, three, zero. That's a G minor six. It's a beautiful chord. Um, at the third fret capoed, it's gonna be B flat minor six, okay? So again, the B flat part changed, but the minor six part stayed the same. So the, the, the prefix will change, but the suffix stays the same. So you don't have to learn a whole bunch of new chords. You just play the same chords you always know, and they're just gonna have new prefixes. Was it? Capo on three. Yeah, kind of hard to see, isn't it? The black capo. And I've got, I'm, I'm using a shove right now. Um, maybe I should use the G7 because it, G7. I'm gonna say G7, it's G7. I'm not sure why it's called that. Somebody know that? It's a little bit easier to see. And generally I try to put the capo right up against the, um, 
uh, right up against the fret wire. If you put it too far back, it's going to buzz. You know, don't make the capo work too hard. Same thing's true with your fingers. If you play, keep your keep your fingers towards the front of the fret, you're not going to have to push down push down so hard. You you really only have to push the string to the fret. You don't have to push the string to the wood. So it may seem like, well, it's not much further. It's a, you need a micrometer to measure, but you know, in the in a in the span of an evening, <laughs> you had all that you know, half a mile. Okay, so everybody, uh, here's the quiz. Uh, play a B flat chord. All right, very good, <laughs> very good. Right? Okay. All right. So um, if we play a C shape, which is the four chord in the key of G, right? C shape. That's E flat. Okay. This note is E flat, and so this is an E flat. If we took our first finger off, that would be E flat major seven. If we put our we put our first finger back on and add our third finger here. Uh, I'm sorry, our pinky here. That would be E flat seven. It's not late. Today's my birthday. Oh, Jason. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yours was yesterday, Jason. Awesome. It's funny. My uh, my best friend, uh, one of my best friends growing up, his birthday is one day before mine. So he was born in 61 also. In fact, I should have texted him yesterday. I totally forgot. Um, and uh, But... His dad thinks it's today, and his mom thinks it's yesterday. And I'm like, well, he is, he's always been like, well, mom would know. <laughs> but I think they both, I <laughs> kid you not, I think they both, and they're, they've been, his parents have been divorced forever. And, and Chip was the best man at my wedding. Um, and, they, uh, and he was the guy that gave the, left the $500 tip, <laughs> Chip was. For that girl, when he felt bad, and when he, she waited on him in Indianapolis at a at a restaurant, and he he remembered she was like this girl who, whose car like <laughs> he, he, she had a uh, I'm pretty sure it was a convertible, and he egged it. He and his buddies egged it, and he always felt bad about it. And like eight years later, he's at a restaurant, and she's waiting on him, and he left her a five hundred dollar tip. But but Chip, Chip's dad had a, had a uh, a uh, birth certificate made up that says July tenth. And his mom has one that says July 9th. He just cracks me up. I was like, wow. Dude, you're like, you're like almost 120 years old. <laughs> he has two birthdays every year. In and out. I might go to In and Out. Well, who knows? I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm, in, I'm doing my uh, shake diet. So for breakfast and lunch, I'm only having uh, a shake, a protein shake. So I've lost a few pounds. So I'm gonna kind of keep doing. I mean, tomorrow I'm not gonna do it, but. Um. <laughs> he deleted that pepper. <laughs> Not before I saw him. <laughs> Peggy, that pepper, that wasn't bad. <laughs> okay, so uh, so this is E flat. E flat. Play E flat for me. Now play B flat. E flat. B flat. E flat. Here's an E flat note right there. Right? Because that's C, D, E flat. Here's another E flat up here. Like when you tune, it's you hit this note with the open E string. So one fret down from that E is an E flat. F flat means go down a fret. Lower that way. G, uh, sorry. B flat to E flat. I picked the third, capo third fret is because we're going to be able to knock out the key of uh, the keys of B flat and the keys of F with this, and those are both those are the first two flat keys, and they're probably the most common flat keys. Uh, they are the most common flat keys, so they're the ones you're going to need to not you know to be able to um, uh, cheat <laughs> using a capo to get away from. Um, and boy, I'll tell you what, I mean. That sounds so much better on acoustic guitar than if I were to do. I mean, that's a different sound. Like Jack Johnson, who plays acoustic guitar, he would ne probably 
he probably uses a capo every now and then, but I, I kind of imagine him playing a lot of bar chords, right? right? Now I can hear him when he plays, because the nice thing about bar chords is you can lift the strings off the frets and create this kind of scratchy thing. It's easier on that, but it's harder with this because you lift off your fingers and you get open strings. You still have open strings right now. So anyway, okay, B flat, E flat. All right, so play B flat for me. This is the quiz. <laughs> There'll be a quiz on this. <laughs> I can just get a little bit of like white tape here. Hold on a second. I gotta tape this out. Um, and uh, now play E flat. I know I have white tape right here. Yeah. Oh, this might be perfect. What's that? All right. I get this really skinny. Really skinny masking tape. I'm not even sure why I have this. I think it's for mixing boards, but I'm not sure why I have it. And then now I'm trying to find the end on it. Okay, now play B flat. All right, now E flat. Oh, I guess this doesn't. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's like this doesn't have an end. I can't turn won't into will, but well, I could write on it, I suppose. I don't know if this is going to quite be thick enough to cover this, but we can try. Pretty darn close. There we go. There be a quiz on this. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, let's learn. Play the D shape now. Remember I said shape. That D is what it looks like, but it's not D. It's up a minor third from D. So if you go up a minor third from D, D up a whole step is E, and up a half step, which is what a minor third, that's one way to get to a minor third is a whole step and a half step, or you can go half step and a whole step. Basically two plus one or one plus two is gonna get you up three half steps. Uh, so a minor third up from D is F, so this is your F chord. So this would be F sus, F, F two. Think of the ketchup commercial, right? <laughs> That's uh, Carly Simon Anticipation. It's such a great song, ruined by being used in a ketchup commercial. The kids are waiting for the ketchup to come out. It's like, Yeah, free falling too. Uh, was, is that right? Yeah. I was watching um, Rick Beato. I think talked about that, and he it was really cool because he showed both parts. There's two parts to that. And neither of them do, I think, this. <laughs> so, but they combine to kind of create that sound. It's a really cool. Um, whatever God, <laughs> is God. <Steve? laughs> you, guys, <laughs> you guys getting uh, 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 dim sum? <laughs> Just put the dim sum out on the back porch and it'll be done in, a, in 15 minutes. Oh, man, you know, it's funny because I we, we talk about moving out of L.A., you know. Uh, so much of my work, I mean, almost 100% of my work is remote, and I could live anywhere. Um, and I, I sometimes think it would be really nice. I don't know. You guys can tell me if you've got a lot of land. I, sometimes it would be nice, I think, to have like 10 or 20 acres and a house. And the problem is, would I have good internet? That would be a, a kind of a requirement. 
Uh, but I could probably get a satellite or I could get some, you know, I would pay extra to have really good internet somehow. Um, I could launch my own private satellite, have Elon Musk send up a satellite for me. Um, but uh, let me know if there's any trappings that. But we have been looking at different areas. And of course, anytime I think about the South, uh, it's funny because I always see the houses with they, so many of them. And they look gorgeous houses they have. But they'll have a screen porch and I go, oh, that's right, bugs. I mean, we can leave our doors open and windows. And it's like, just California doesn't have any bugs. I mean, it might, you know, occasional like wasp or something, but it's not that bad. Um, so yeah, the free falling thing was, uh, we'll get to this chord next, soon. Okay, next, actually, I'll, I'll show you next. So, okay, so we have B flat, E flat, and F. Okay, it looks like G, C, and D, but it's B flat, I'm, yeah, E flat and F. All right, so so play B flat. Play E flat. Um, play F. Uh, play. Um, let's see. Play. Uh, play E flat again. Play B flat. Now, obviously, this quiz is going to get harder as we go, right? Play B flat. Okay, now F. Now E flat. Play F. All right. All right. See you later, Rachel. All right, so um, I, I got I I I blocked her him. We don't know. It could be a dog. <laughs> I love that cartoon. There's a dog sitting in the computer. He goes, "I the thing I love about the internet, nobody knows I'm a dog." <laughs> so okay. Uh, before we go to the A shape, let's go to the E minor shape. So E minor shape is G. I'm sorry, G minor. Okay. So that would be just one finger. Would be G minor seven. Uh, if you want, you could remember G major would be this. Okay. So the again the suffixes all stay the same. It's the prefixes that change. Okay. Yeah. Dennis, you're more patient than I am. <laughs> I'm the one that's getting distracted, so, and that's the whole intent. Uh, so, she'll go somewhere else. Or change, or log in as a different person and do it all over again. Hey, Dickie, good to see you. Okay, so, just to review, B flat, E flat, F, G minor. I may do a trick question on this quiz and say G major, you can do G7. You can do G7 this way. Again, any E shape you know will apply here. E minor six would be G minor six, okay? So the prefix is gonna be G instead of E, um, but the suffix is going to stay the same. So again, I, you don't have to learn a lot more information, just a little bit more information. And I'm not asking you to memorize every position on the neck. This is a very important one because this gives us, this moves are the key of F and B flat to the key of D and the key of G shapes. So the the, the chords from uh, so the shapes from D and F, uh, G go to make our our uh, our chords from uh, the key of B, F and B flat. So my point being that we're we're actually making um, two flat keys a very very simple and beautiful keys on the acoustic guitar. Catherine, in the house. Okay, so here we go. One more time. B flat, E flat, F, G minor, and for bonus, G major, or G. If I, I may say just G. I won't say G major. You don't say G major. You say G. Play a G chord, right? You know, it's like a Pete Townsend in the key of G instead of E. Okay, 
Here we go. Play a B flat chord. Now we have more, more. Okay, play E flat. We have more options. Okay, play G minor. Hey, I get to take a sip now while you guys do the work. Play F. Play E flat. You've missed some fun, Catherine. Yeah. You should not have logged in late. All right, play G minor. B flat. Play G. Trick question. E flat. F. Play F sus. Do you know F sus? Okay, here's F sus. Right? G, I'm sorry, uh, B flat, B flat two, B flat, B flat major seven, B flat seven. Remember, that's kind of old school seventh chord, B flat seven. That's like playing some Bob Dylan song. The thing I like about B flat, se the seventh chord, the seventh chord, is it. I always called it, oh, you know, I would say, oh, play C, now explode C, and it becomes a G seven. So in this case, if you explode E flat, it becomes B flat seven. All right, let's turn another chord. The A shape is, um, and now we're in the key of, of F. So this is the C chord, okay? So we have B flat, play that with me. We have E flat, play the D shape, that's F. We have, play the E minor shape, that's G minor. And then play the C sh or A shape, and that's C. I'm touching my face so we can take a sip. <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> Your mic is on. Okay, so also, if you did the A minor shape, this would be C minor. And C minor would be a chord that's in the key of B flat. The one chord would be B flat. The two chord would be C minor. The three chord would be like a B minor shape, D minor. Uh, but don't worry about that one. E flat would be the four, four chord. The five chord would be F. And the six chord would be um, the E minor shape, which is G minor. But we want the A. And I tend to play A with these four fingers because... It's not, it's, you don't have a lot of real estate because you're all on the same fret. So if I can swap out a slightly larger first finger for a slightly smaller pinky, that's usually how I play A and, you know, shape. But this is C. Okay, I want you to slide your pinky up. And if you want, you can play like this. Like if you play A like this, you can slide your third finger up or you can add your pinky. But basically we want to make an A sus shape and that's C sus. And the reason I'm showing you this is for free falling. Okay, so that is it, 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 in open position, but again, I'm using open position numbers here because, um, so it would be uh, X, zero, two, two, three, zero. That would be A sus, but we're at third fret, we're C sus, okay? Um, and that's the other chord in free falling. There's basically two chords. It's F, B flat, B flat, F, a sus. So I do actually play, I, I just, you can just leave the third finger right there. That could be your anchor. The third finger is on the, there for the F chord. The third finger is there for the B flat chord. And the third finger is there for the A, I'm sorry, the C sus chord. Basically, that, that really, and you could, Maybe, does it ever go to the... Does the bass line go down? Reed? Reed would know. Yeah, no, that would be A2. That would be A2. No third, because the third is on the second string. So this, so this would be C2.
Yeah, so free falling. All right. Um, let's see. Um, so we and then don't forget. So we had potentially C minor as well as C major. All right. Okay, Frankie, I'm going to go a little slower. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to say a chord name, and then I'm going to wait a couple seconds, and then I'm going to play it. So that way you can know if you're right or not. Because otherwise, I can't I can't see you. We could do this on Zoom. I do it, uh, like, how would I do that? Like, where I could see it? That would be annoying. <laughs> just have everybody on Zoom. I could mute everybody. And then i just unmute you. Be like a class. Um... Poor teachers are having to deal with that. Oh, my sister's doing that. She teaches at Rhode Island School of Design, and uh, she's ha she just started last week, and she's actually doing she's doing great. She actually would love to be back with the students, but all the teachers are like, no, 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 we can't go back. I'm like, really? <laughs> Whatever. But uh, yeah, the kids, the kids, she she really uh, she's taught there for thirty plus years, and um, she has uh, she one of her classes is a mandatory freshman drawing class. And um, so basically, she's just been like, you know, she teaches a little bit and she makes sure everybody can hear her. She'll have 10 students at a time, I think. And she'll have them drawing something like first thing she did was had them buy a plant and then they're drawing, drawing the plant. And she'd hold it up and have them hold up their picture to their camera. And then she would look at it as best she can. She didn't know she could hook her laptop to the her TV. I said, well, you just need to get Apple TV and you can you can actually just do it through uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Um, so she's going to do that. She's going to have to school buy her uh, Apple TV. Uh, probably other ways to do that too. But she could do a HDMI cable, but that's a pain if you want to sit on the sofa and have this long cable going to your ear. No, it's no fun. Um, Bob, see you later. Thanks for tuning in. I have, like, I, I have one student <laughs> that I, I do. We do FaceTime. We don't do Zoom. We FaceTime. And... Um, it's very hard. Well, he's in London, so he's 6,000 miles away. So that makes it really tough because he, it, it, there's a lag, and then he's 15. And uh, in fact, I need, to, I need to connect with him again, but uh, he's 15, and he um, has a tension span of a gnat. <laughs> I mean, I love him to death, but he's a, he's a good kid. I really like him a lot, but... Um, all right, so um, so just to review quick, B flat, B flat, F, G minor, G, C, and C minor. Okay. Oh, let's do C sus. Okay. Yeah, and that's the third. When you say sus, when you say C sus, you're implying a sus four. So we're going here's C. One, two, three, four, three. Uh, when you just put sus after uh, a letter, um, you're implying that it's a sus four. We used to say C sus four, but because that was really the only kind of sus chord you would use in that way, um, it just became shorthand sus. Hey, Mornay. Is it Mornay? South Africa. I was just, I just got a text from a dear, um, my, my best friend, one of my best friends growing up, his mom, she's got to be 80. She was just texting me happy birthday and she was born and raised in South Africa. Uh, and uh, she always had, she lived in our neighborhood. She always sounded so exotic. She had that beautiful Afrikaner accent, which was British, sounded British to me. Like, are you from England? No, no, I'm from Afri South Africa. <laughs> She's African American, <laughs> like Elon Musk. <laughs> I love that picture. With, was it Kanye with Elon Musk? And they're just saying, yeah, Kanye with a, a real African American. <laughs> A C sus two, yes, yeah, you're right. C two would be shorthand for C sus two, and a C two chord would be this, but there's no third in that. So a more, 
precise C2 chord might be something like this, where we have C, which is the root, a G, which is the fifth, a D, which is the second, and an E, which is that third. Right? I always think of like Nadia Singh. That's a C, that's a sus two suspension. Two, two, one, one, two, two, one, one, four, four, three, three, four, four, three, three. And the other sus would be the six to the five, right? So you have three susses. You have three notes in a triad, one, three, five, and you have three susses, two, four, six. And the four, three is the is what we commonly call sus chord. The two would exactly be that, Gary, you're right. And it would, could resolve, it doesn't have to resolve. And sometimes we resolve up, like here. That's more of like it's missing the third and we're bringing the third in. On a C2 to C chord. And I, I love the fact that I'm actually using a capo right now and I'm having you, I'm talking about these chords by their real names. Because what it is, is even subliminally, it's getting you thinking, oh, that's a C chord. And here's the great thing. Boom, watch this, check this out. That's new information. Now you know that that's a C2 chord, right? You know that this is an F chord. This is an E flat. I mean, you'll start to see this. That's a B flat chord. This is G minor. See, that's why you know it. That's why you learn it. Because it actually, like I said, it, it increases your knowledge up the fretboard. Okay, there's the other sus, which is the one we often think of, in this case, would be the rock and roll thing, the blues thing, is a five. Five. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Now I'm going to have to do this all over again. Hey, Michael. Um. <laughs> you would watch it all. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, let's see. Earl, good to see you. You get, yes, I know it's you. Well, you can eat. No, you can eat. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Earl. You can eat in front of me. I don't care. E flat. E flat. F. G minor. G. C. C minor. Six chords so far. Almost done. Might come up with a couple more. Yeah, come on. Okay, you ready? All right, we're just going to do those chords in that order right now. All right, B flat. Okay, hopefully you played this. E flat. Give me a second. Here it is. F. Sorry, I put my hand on it. Cheating. Okay, but you were probably looking at your guitar, so hopefully you didn't see that. Okay, here's a trick question. If this is F, how do you play F minor? Can you do that for me? No, not that one. No, no. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> that one there. So that would be F minor. Okay. Now play G minor. Okay. You got G minor yet? Frankie, that's not right. <laughs> that's G minor. Okay. How about G? Regular G. G major. Okay, Gary, how about G sus? That's right, like that, right? <laughs> you had it. See, now you got it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, now play uh, C for me. C, you should have played this. Okay, what about C minor? Play, go C again. How would you play C7? Like this. Open, second, open, second, open. Okay, ready? I'm going to give you another quiz here. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. E flat. Here you go. G minor. OK. 
Okay. C minor. Here we go. F. Right? But F sus. Okay. B flat. All right, that should be an easy one. That's the first one we've learned. And how about uh, G? How about G minor? Good. Okay, now how many of you got all of those right? I think that was all six of the chords, right? I have B flat. So here it is, if you want to write these down, B flat, E flat, oops, F, G minor, oh no, there's seven, G, C, C minor. Those are the main ones right now. B kitty. <clears throat> yeah, it's like, was it eight o'clock at night in London? Which is good, because you're home from work, you chill with me. Be glad I'm not doing this every day, like I was. Oh, the cage thing, yeah. Yep, the cage thing definitely can help. Okay, you got four of them right. Okay, good, that's pretty good. Um... You know, I was, I mentioned on Wednesday that I had done a chart for this, but it was like literally a long time ago. And I'm pretty sure I created like a JPEG screenshot kind of thing of it. Um, I'm just not sure. Let's see if I have something called web. No. What about here? Oh, no. I don't know. No. Yeah, I maybe on my laptop. I should look at my laptop. I'm pretty sure somewhere I have, you know, because I did this old website. And I was able, able to, back in the day, I was able, I, you know, HTML was great. I had an HTML creator that allowed me to, it was a WYSIWYG. Do you know what a WYSIWYG is? What you see is what you get. So I could type it in, make it look like I wanted to, and it would create the HTML. I mean, this is a long time ago. It was in the 90s. And I, I put up there all sorts of tips. I had strumming. In fact, I think some of the JPEGs that I did for the strumming patterns, some of those are from that era, the 90s. Uh, st strumming grooves that I created on uh, Finale, which I still have, and, um, uh, and then you know, screenshotted and posted up into that, um, into the HTML up on this. It was like hometown dot um, no, it's hometel.aol.com or something, I forget. And it was, it was tips for worship leaders and tips for um, guitar players. And that's kind of how, because what, what I was doing was, um, and I, that was when I got hooked up with uh, Amazon uh, uh, affiliates, that, as far back as that, and uh, 98, 99, I think. Because I was still teaching clinics, and I thought, well, you know, I, w I wanted to get all that information that I was teaching up online so that they could log in. So I would get, you know, I'd hand out uh, paperwork, and um, it would have my UR URL on it, and then they would go, of course, those sites are long gone. Um, it was like a hosting thing that AOL did back in the day. And... Um, but I had, I had links, you know, like gear reviews and things like that up there, too, so I would have links and... People would buy stuff like if you go to any of my if you go to click on any of those uh, Amazon links um, in my informa information window on my YouTube channel, you click on any of those um, and you buy anything. If you go and buy, um, you know, a, a, a car cover, you know, I get a percentage of that sale. So you don't have to buy the thing that I'm linking you to. You can go click on the pick and go and buy, you know, a new laptop. Um, it's crazy. I have people that do that. <laughs> <laughs> they totally do it. So, um, have I created a series on power chords? Um, so I missed that, uh, Gary. I didn't see that on Discord. Um, you mean disc power chord? Huh? Disc power chord? Uh, so, let's see. By the way, let me go grab that Discord link so that we can do an invite for Discord, okay? And um, 
So if anyone is new and hasn't joined Discord, that's where I upload all of the um, PDFs of things that we work on. I could technically do a PD. I could do a um, a chart of this. You know, these chords, if you want, that would not be a bad idea. Um, okay, so here's. I'll do that right now while we talk. All right. I think I copied it. Here you go. So that's an invite. Um, 21H00. Oh, thank you, uh, M. Ford. Appreciate that. Yeah, so Joseph um, Pacifico, that Discord site has uh, some, they oftentimes will continue the discussion before and after my live stream. Uh, so there's plenty of discussions there. Bruce is doing, um, who's one of the moderators, he is. Um, doing a CGB, uh, CBG build for me, um, which is stand, CB, CBG stands for cigar, cigar box guitar. Um, and so um, he's doing that. He's posting pictures of the progress of that up there. And then, like I said, all of the PDFs that I've created. Oh, my gosh. My desk is such a mess right now. Uh, taxes. I got all this tax stuff. Um, and so I got to. Yeah, my, my account called me up yesterday. Congratulations, you made more money than you did the year before. And I went, oh, goody. <laughs> he goes, yeah, you, did, you underpaid. I'm like, dang it, I knew it. So, okay. Um, so I'm going to write out some chords here and um, for capoed at the third fret. So... Um, Capo, third fret. And so you, you'll, what you'll see is familiar shapes with unfamiliar names. And it's like, whoa. But it's just going to be like that. So there's, it's like B flat. No, that's G. Yeah, that's B flat when you capo at the third fret. Okay. Um, so, so I'm going to write this and upload this to the Discord. There's also JPEGs of little screenshots I did of some of the... Um, uh, rhythm grooves, uh, and you can, you can, so that's just one groove per screenshot. So what I would do is I would create a Word doc or a Pages doc or whatever. Uh, you could even go to Google Docs and, and then drag those JPEGs into the doc so you have like 10 of, them, 10 of them or 5 of them on one page so you don't have to, it's silly to have a folder full of these old JPEGs. So, um, Uh, I'll put fingerings in here. All right, touching my face. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, G minor. So if I touch my face, we have a drinking game. Gary keeps track of the rules. Uh, if I touch my face, you take a sip. Usually, I mean, whatever your libation is in front of you. In my case, it's usually Starbucks coffee. Um, if I use air quotes, if I refer to myself in the third person, but really, how, much, how often has Tom done that? Um... If I say that I played all the guitars on Apex Legend, the game, then you take a sip. If I drop a pick, you take a sip. If I drop a thumb pick, you take two sips. Uh, if I switch guitars, you take a sip. If I pick up a guitar and I don't know what the tuning is, like I start playing it and I think it's in standard tuning, but it's really in dad gad or drop D or something, that's a sip of pull offense. If I leave the room, that's a sip. If I say there will be no quiz on this that's a sip and that's a I call that a celebratory sip but today there's a quiz on it so you don't get to take a sip for that there's no celebrating I'm going to put my fingering for this a shape I can't believe I'm getting these right and talking at the same time but I think they're all right 
So I got room for a couple more. So I'll come up with a couple more we can. Okay. So these are all pretty standard. You know, these are all chords that kind of get us out of uh, the key. So if we were in the, don't worry, I'm going to scan it. Um, if we were in the key of B flat, then this would be the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, the six chord. Um, this would be the two chord. The three chord would be a D minor chord, which would be B minor, which would be a bar chord. Um, I may write that in because that would finish out, that would round out the key of B flat. If we're in the key of F, we'd have F, B flat, C, um, also D minor, G minor, um, let's see, an A minor. An A minor would be like playing F sharp minor. Um, so maybe I'll write those two there, but they're both bar chords. Okay, so I know some of us are not very good at bar chords. However, the beauty of um, this would be B, D minor. It looks like B minor. If you, if you were to play this in open position, it would be second fret or fifth fret. Um, and this one's one of those ones that's easy to see. Oh, yeah, I, see, I know that's D minor. Um, and that's A minor. Uh, but what's nice about it is even if you can't do bar chords, you're you're probably a little bit more likely to be able to play these bar chords uh, because you're further up the neck, your arm is closer to your body, you can get better, kind of get better elbow placement, you know, maybe up against your body or out or whatever it takes to get that first finger holding down those strings. The frets are, the strings are now at fret height, okay? So they're now lower. They're down here instead of, uh, instead of at nut height. So you're not, you don't have to push down as much. And those frets are smaller. So as you add the other fingers in, they're not as far away from your first finger that's doing the, the most of the work. Let me move this foot stand. I think this foot stand, by the way, is on my Amazon, um, is, a one, is on the Amazon list, this exact foot stand. And it's funny because it's like, it's, it's the same manufacturer making this one, and the only thing that's different is the logo on all of them. <laughs> It's like they're all the same. They're built in the same factory, but it's all just different logos so different people. Like, like we could come up with the the uh, Straley School footrest and just have them put Straley School on it or something like that. Um, uh, but the reason I put my footrest there is just so my guitar is higher up so you guys can see it. Um, the um, so that's so the two the two shapes to round out the key uh, the keys of B flat and F um, would be this, which is a B minor shape at the fifth fret, so it's, oh, Dennis, what did you say? <laughs> I got the scar during the stream. Uh, I told you my pirate joke. the new pirate movie coming out it's rated R. <laughs> google it's pretty funny i wouldn't normally say google anything because you never know what you're going to find i don't want screenshots <laughs> okay i'm using a pick to touch my face so that doesn't count i think i think i should market this as a covid covid face scratching thing Tra charge like 50 dollars for it you can scratch your face in the covid era with this device <laughs> um <laughs> so Google pirate pickup lines. <laughs> really, really stupid. Pretty funny though. You know, one was, uh, Arr, prepare to be boarded. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> really stupid. Okay. And then here, this would be A minor. Again, A minor is the three chord in the key of F. It's not in the key of B flat, it's in the key of F. So, all right. So let me write these two chords out and then I'll scan this and we'll be golden. So D minor and A minor. I didn't do all the variations on the prefixes like F minor, F minor seven, F seven, or the C sus or any of that stuff. Uh, I stu I kept, I'm keeping to major and minor chords, okay? And oh, and the G is not in any of these keys. It's not in F or the key of B flat. So the G is a kind of, G is the bonus chord really, to be honest. 
but all the other chords that I'm, I have here are in one or both of those keys. Okay, and then A minor. Oh yeah, did I did I forget something? You keep adding. Utter that's dope. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, should a quiz occur? Reversing. Yeah, backwashed, right, Gary? Arkid. <laughs> hey, David, welcome back. I haven't seen you in a while. You're not working. Yeah, that is a total da dad joke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. To air is human. To our is pirate. <laughs> Ooh, too funny. Pi yeah, pirate pickup lines. Somebody already. Somebody's already Googled it. I'm sure, right? All right. So this is ready to be scanned. Now I I don't know. I th I'll see what the attention span is on this. Uh, but I, I, I may not, uh, I mean, I could continue on capoing for a couple more things. I thought it might be fun and to do lists uh, for next few quote unquote lessons. It wouldn't really be lessons, although trust me, I'll find tons to talk about when I, when we start doing these lists, but like. Top 10 favorite guitar players. Um, I may not even have do a top 10 list. It may just be, hey, what? because I want to know yours too. Um, and uh, so we're, this way we can kind of go back and forth on it. But like, because uh, I, I post on my Facebook page something about um, favorite or, you know, name a, a guitar solo, uh, name a, a song with a guitar solo on, a pop, song, a pop hit with a guitar solo on. And so many people just started naming their favorite rock songs like, you know, Hotel California. I'm like, well, because the example I gave was um, Beat It with Eddie Van Halen. It's a great example because Eddie, you know, it's like Eddie was a guest guitarist. And the reason I, I, I thought of this was because Alex and I, my son Alex and I were kind of speculating, are solos going to come back in pop songs? And Alex was because he's been doing a lot of solos. He works with a lot of unknown, new, up-and-coming pop artists. And they do tend to like to put a guitar solo on a song, which is interesting to me because I think part of the reason guitar solos went away is the same reason why um, intros back in the 80s averaged 30 seconds. But intros on songs today, and by intro I mean the how long the song, what, how much of the song is before the vocal starts, the average intro length today is three seconds. And you might say that's attention span. I think it has more to do with money than anything. And it's like if you can play more songs in, in an hour and still have more time for commercials, then that's a win-win um, for, the, for the station, not necessarily for the listener. Uh, but it's funny to listen to 80s songs and go, oh my gosh, these, when is a song going to start? <laughs> you know? I, I'm shocked at how long these intros are sometimes. I forget. Some of them are almost a minute long. I remember, uh, how long is uh, I Need a Lover by, that's a, that's a, okay. I, I, in fact, I started doing a list on Wednesday. <laughs> I'm gonna, I gotta add that to the list. I'm gonna get longest song intros, right? Let's see, uh, desktop. And I'm gonna upload this, um, You know, what's the longest song intro you can think of? Longest. And, it, you know, hit. It's got to be a hit song intro. It can't be some obscure song that no one's ever heard before. So that would be a fun one. Full, yeah, the full length version of. Um, And I, I would say, I, I mean, I don't know if I need a lover uh, by, um, I'm not sure how long um, 
Queen had some long intros, that's right. I'm not so sure. Um, How long um, Pat Benatar's intro to I Need a Lover is. Um, but she covered that song. And that was uh, back kind of when uh, Mellencamp was thinking he was going to be um, a, more of a songwriter, more of a, like a, a Bruce Springsteen kind of type uh, songwriter. Because, you know, Bruce Springsteen had songs that, before he was famous. He wrote Fire for the Pointer Sisters. Um, Pointer Sisters? He also wrote um, uh, Manfred Mann's hit, one hit. Um, let's see. This is Capo 3. Capo 3. Okay. So now I've got that. Okay, I'm going to the Discord. I'm going to upload that. I'll also uh, get you a new fresh link. No, not that. Tom's Bookmarks is where these are at. Okay. Whoops. Did I not? Did I? Oh, I saved it to desktop. Dang it. Look at this. Boom. Upload. Needs no commentary. Okay, and then here's the link to Discord in case you haven't. Um, there's the link to Discord, and you can grab that. You can grab this document that I just uploaded. Oops. Oh, this one. You gotta get it out of the way of the. Okay, so these are all. See, you're like, wait, those aren't right. That's not right. No, look at the top line. <laughs> Somebody's probably gonna post this on the internet and say, this guitar player is an idiot. <laughs> it's like, yeah, whatever. I'm the idiot. Um, let's see. All right, so definition of, for the longest song. We need some definition. Yeah, uh, not longest song, longest intro before lyrics come in. It needs to be a hit. Um, and I Need a Lover was a hit in Indiana, the Mellencamp version. I think it was just an album cut on Benatar's ver uh, record. So I don't know that it was a hit, so I'm, I might not be able to do it. But it has to have lyric. It has to sing, you know, singing on it. A Stairway to Heaven is a very long one. Now, yes, the other day when I posted, um, so the the one I did the other day on Facebook was, um, and I ended up kind of changing the rules as it went. But I thought it was clear what I meant, but I, I wasn't clear, and people were just naming Stairway to Heaven and things like that. It, it can't, it couldn't be a band song. Unless the artist, like, for example, maybe While My Guitar Gently Weeps would be an example. Because it was, the Beatles were pop, so technically that was a pop song, though I would call it kind of an AOR song. Album-oriented radio, or album-oriented rock song. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily call it pop, top 40. Uh, but it had a guest guitar player on it, soloing. Uh, the other thing is, is the solo memorable? Which I would say, while what Eric Clapton did on While My Guitar Gently Weeps was very memorable. Um, but Van Halen's solo was iconic. Uh, and uh, so other ones that came up with, you know, Lukather, Steve Lukather from Toto. And I didn't, like, people were saying, oh, Rosanna. And I'm like, yeah, except, like, people were saying Guns N' Roses. And I'm like, no, not Guns N' Roses, because they have a lead guitar player. So his job is to play a solo on every song. So they, every song they did had a guitar solo. So I was like, uh, crush. Oh, it does have a long intro. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, what's that? Um, I'm not sure. I think he does a. a But I like that intro. It's a really good intro. Um, but I Need a Lover is, I don't know if you've ever heard that song, but that's a very long intro. Uh, 
And it's actually a pretty... I, I had no idea what he was saying. So, I need a lover that won't drive me crazy. I need a lover that won't drive me crazy. I need a lover that won't drive me crazy. Some girl knows me. And I'm like, what the hell is he saying? And he's saying, some girl who knows the meaning of, hey, hit the highway. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's, that's just classic. Uh, so I, you know, and I'm trying to remember if I've, I, I know I've heard Pat Benatar's version, but she must have said, some guy who knows the meaning of, hey, hit the highway. You know, she just changed the, changed the gender of the song. So, um, yeah, Stairway to Heaven with really long intro. Yeah, that's probably longer than I'm, I Need a Lover. But I'm trying to think of a pop song. And like I said, in the 80s, there were a lot of like Duran Duran and, and uh, uh, you know, Haircut 100 and different bands like that that had, uh, uh, what was that one band, the cut, uh, Cutting Something Cut? Uh, there were so many bands in the 80s. Um, Pink Houses, that's a long one too, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the entire plugged era, unplugged era, you're right. Pink Floyd, you're right, Echoes. But I'm th like I'm thinking something that was a top 40, top 10, number one hit. I'm also going to do, uh, I want to do a list of instrumental songs. That used to be a thing. The last instrumental hit I remember was Rocket by, in the 80s, by, um, used to be a big thing to do an inst have instrumental songs. Rocket was by um, Herbie Hancock. Uh, Faltenheimer, dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 that's dun, 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 dun. was that Rocket? No, is that Faltenheimer? Falt, was it Harold Faltenheimer or something like that? He had it. Uh, I mean, but there were music box dancers. There were a million in the sixties and seventies. It was very common. In fact, I would guess you could probably look back in the sixties, particularly like sixty-five to seventy-five. Probably there was at, at least one instrumental song in the top forty at any one moment. Um, so, Sweet Jane, Lou Reed, yeah. Well, album version, yeah, radio version, that's true. They would shorten, shorten intros um, uh, for the two versions. Um, and generally, the shorter version would be on the top 40 radio. Like, Kiss FM would play the short, you know. Um, I, would, I mean, I listened to, in the 80s, I listened almost ex exclusively to K-Rock. Here in Los Angeles, and K Rock launched a million uh, new age, new wave bands. Um, British invasion started at K Rock in LA. And K Rock used to have their studio, gosh, a block and a half from our apartment. And I would walk to the mall or something and I'd go right by it, and there would be a thousand girls in front of K Rock. I'm like, what's going on? And then this white limo would pull up, and like Duran Duran would get out, or The Fix. Or you too, or somebody would get out right there in Pasadena and just go right up the steps. And that building's gone now. It's not even not there anymore. But uh, Moby Grape, worst solo. Yeah, that's a that would be a tough one. I don't know. Um, I mean, a favorite solo that would be a tough one. Um, I could do top ten solos. Um, I, I I already have a list like that. Um, and again, I won't be able to play. I could maybe noodle with them a little bit, but I won't be able to play the songs on here like Rick Beato does, or else I won't be able to monetize. And when he does that, um, oh no, this is what this is the page I want. Um, did I already do this? No. Best pop song solos. Um, yeah, that was the one I did. But see, people kept naming bands that had guitar players. I'm like, no, no, I want a guest soloist on a top ten hit. So pop, generally pop, because people say, oh, you know, what about U2? I'm like, well, A, not a guest soloist, and not a lot of solos on U2 records, and they weren't top 10 hits. They sold 100 million records, but they're not, they're not hitting the pop charts, you know? Uh, favorite guitar solos. And part of this, too, is the cool thing is that I will learn stuff from this if I, when I do these... So I may do this on Monday, start on Monday, and I'll pick one category and we'll go with it. Because it'll, it'll trigger a lot of memories and stories and things like that. Um, thoughts, guitar things I will try to, you know, um, 
Yeah, Walk This Way. That's a, that's a very good, uh, that's, a, that's a great guitar solo. It's one of my favorite um, uh, guitar solo, rock guitar solos, because it's so funky. Like the vibe on it is so funky. I mean, uh, it's, it's a very hard solo to play. Too is really um, is really really hard to play the rhythm part. I I've never really I think it it's it's like I've never I have to listen to it again. That it's been years since I tried to sit down and figure. It. So it's such a great rhythm part. So that alone is worth it. But then it's like was it. What is it? What is it? What is it? Is that, uh, what's the starting note? What's it? No, it's it's. It's 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 got that. The thing that I learned from Rick Bennick, the guitar player in at, for Roadmaster in Indiana, that was my friend. Uh, you know, he was like. They were like the big band in Indiana, um, them and Faith Band. And then Mellencamp came along and he took the keyboard player from Faith Band and the bass player from Roadmaster and had, they were in his band for years, but, um, oh shoot, what is it? What is it? It's something like that, it was like this. such a great um i'm touching my face so we can all take a drink i must be thirsty it's such a great kind of where are you <laughs> solo you know it's like wait what you know and he's just kind of going back and forth between two notes i mean i love doing that kind of stuff like a i'm bending up to this stuff i'm going That's just a lot of this is this fuzz pedal is out of control. That's the best fuzz pedal out there. Um, so uh, let's see, Steve Allen, of course. Well, I'll, t I'll give you an example of if that's one of the best yeah, guitar scenes in a movie. Uh, that one could be another one. Guitar scenes in movies. I've Played guitar in movies, pretended to play guitar in movies. Uh, well, and uh, best guitar scenes. I mean, the best is um, is uh, Back to the Future. And I know Tim May. Uh, Tim May is the one that coached, and he's the one that played the guitar on that. He coached uh, Michael J. Fox how to play that. So, and so Michael J. Fox's hands are pretty darn close to what uh, uh, Tim May played on that. Um, oh yeah, get, yeah, Bill and Ted's excellent, and also um, Wayne's World. Best venues in L.A. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about that the other day because there's so many of the venues that I played at back in the 80s when I was doing original stuff um, that they don't exist anymore. And I never played the whiskey. I played FM Station. My son played at the Troubadour. I never played the Troubadour, and the Troubadour is closing. I'm pretty sure that, that COVID was fatal to the Troubadour because um, they were going to impose all sorts of new rules for them to open, and they said, there's no way we can make any money. I don't know if you've ever been to the Troubadour, but it's a long, skinny room, and the stage is on the, on the side. So it's like the whole audience is just right up against the stage. And then there's a balcony that's pretty small. It's like three rows or something. That's usually where I would sit. Like when Alex was playing there, I, would, I went up there because uh, I didn't want to be in the crush. And they, I think there was a 
bar up there so I could get drinks at the up in the balcony. It was a lot easier than having to wait in line downstairs. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure the Troubadour is closing. Uh, that was what I heard, but maybe that was just a kind of an idle threat. Um, we'll see. Maybe someone will come in. Although when I went to Troubadour, I had no idea that it was literally across the street in Beverly Hills. So on the other side of the street is mansions. And so you get to Troubadour, and it's like there's a big road. I forget what it is. And then you cross the street, and you're at the Troubadour. And it's like, what? So it's kind of weird, but there's been, it's a business district, so there's a lot of things there. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, Eruption. Uh, Eruption is a, is a great, it's kind of a standalone song, but it wasn't, and it wasn't a hit. Um, and I, n I never got, like, what happened with the Van Halen thing is there were, when Van Halen came out, um, let's see, it was 78. I was a kind of a jazz snob in 78. Um, so, yes. Um, so, I kind of, um, di oops, I didn't really get into Van Halen when they first came out. Um, consequently, um, uh, you know, I kind of missed out on it. Although when I heard him play, you know, when I heard him, I was like, that's amazing. And I, I had already been doing that. You know, that I'd already been doing that kind of stuff uh, because other guitar players that I listened to did that, did that. So this um, before Eddie, um, but Eddie was a Pasadena native. And so when we moved to Pasadena, when I moved to Pasadena, I kept running into people that were like, oh, you know, you're a guitar player. I know Eddie Van Halen. Do you like Eddie? I'm like, well, yeah, I like Eddie. And they're like, oh, man, he's amazing. And I used to go to parties and he'd be jam I used to go to their jams in the garages. And like that. I heard so many people talk about, you know, Van Halen and just like playing at backyard parties in Pasadena. It must have been crazy. And they said they were insanely loud. <laughs> like if the police didn't get called out five times, they didn't feel like it was a good show kind of stuff, you know. Gary, right now, man, LA is like, I've been driving and there is zero traffic. It's insane. It's just like the 84 Olympics. They, we were told in, for the 84 Olympics that LA was just going to be freaking chaos. And uh, that it, you weren't going to be able to get anywhere. So everybody left town or took the two weeks off from work or whatever. And I'll tell you, drive around LA during the... During, um, the 84 Olympics was a breeze. Uh, and I have been stuck in some really nasty traffic. I mean, I remember coming back from a session I had in Irvine. And I was driving to um, a friend's house. And they lived up on Mulholland Drive. My, my Beth and the kids were meeting me there. And uh, they lived up on Mulholland Drive uh, in the valley. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, take me an hour and a half to get there. And it was a Friday night. No, I'm not going to take an hour and a half. I left Irvine at 4 o'clock. And this was quite a while ago. This was probably 15 years ago. Um, and I'm driving up the 405, which is the worst. It's the only way. It, was the, it went from Irvine, basically, to this person's house. Um, and I'm getting, you know, it's just, I'm in a, like you said, Gary, it was a parking lot. And I, they have one of those signs that says, I'm at the airport. It says 60 minutes to the 10 freeway. And I'm like, it's not going to take 60 minutes to get to the 10 freeway. The 10 freeway is right there. And I'll be darned if it didn't take 60 minutes to get right there. I was like, are you kidding me? That's why I could never live on the west side. I could never depend on the 605 or 405. This, in fact, our house, we're really close to 405. And so that's really the only way to get to the airport. And a couple times I've taken it, I've just been really frustrated getting to the airport. And now I'm just telling everybody, let's just go out of Burbank unless we're flying international. I'll pay extra. So I'm paying. I, I pay extra for everybody just to fly out of Burbank because I can get to Burbank in 10 minutes. But LAX can take three hours, even though it's only like 23 miles away or something. It's, it's ridiculous. But right now, it's, it's a breeze. No, A, the airport's no problem. Um, I remember being stuck at the airport. It took me an hour to do a lap around the picking someone up and they weren't there and I had to do a second lap. It was like, oh my gosh, this is before cell phones. Yeah, 
New York is brutal too. I got stuck. I I had a gig. Um, in fact, uh, who, who's keeping track of the stories? This is how I get reminded of stories. Okay, so whoever's keeping track of the stories, remind me to tell you my L.A. Reed story. L.A. Reed story. Okay? Because I don't think I've told the L.A. Reed story. Yeah, well, and you know, I'll tell you what had me dr drop the snob factor. Be kidding. It happened, fortunately for me, it happened very young. Because, you know, I was, I totally got into George Benson, and I got into Charlie Parker and, and Coltrane and West Montgomery, and I mean, I was just like studying jazz. And jazz is a great thing to study because it's a very strong discipline. Uh, it's a very, you need, you know, you generally need to know how to play in a lot of keys. Uh, you learn how to read. Uh, you, you know, you learn how to play with other instruments and things like that. So, um, but I flew out to California just in um, August of 1982. Uh, to see if I wanted to move out here. I flew out here, and one of the nights I flew out, I went to, uh, I went, every night I went to a different club, jazz club, to see different people. And one night I went to a place in Santa Monica called At My Place. Doesn't, I don't think it exists anymore. Or it may be a different name. Well, now it's not existing. Um, and uh, it was to see a, uh, someone who I'd never heard of, but it was a jazz, it, you know, fairly, but it was someone named Richard Smith, a sax player. And um, his guitar player was a guy named Carl Verheyen, and he blew me away. And so I went up to him afterwards, and I said, Hi, my name's Tom Sterling. I want to move here. I'd love to be a session player. You know, can, would you be interested in, you know, uh, can, can I take a guitar lesson from you? And he said, sure. You know, and he gave me his phone number, and I set up a lesson, I think, for the next day. And I forget, it was like 40 bucks for an hour or something. And so um, I went to a guitar lesson from him, and... You know, here's a guy who had played on, at, even at that point, he was, uh, that was right before he started working on Cheers, but he does the guitar for Cheers. Um, I, I went to a Cheers session with him once and sat there and watched him do like two or three episodes in one sitting uh, where they did all the music for that. Um, but he, um, I go into his apartment at the time, he just had an apartment in Van Nuys, he and his wife, and um, I go into his apartment in his second bedroom where he had his guitar set up, set up set up at he had synchronicity he had the police synchronicity album there and i'm like what do you listen to that pop stuff for and he goes are you kidding i said no and he goes do you know how many people pay me to try to sound like andy summers and i went that was when that kind of clicked that oh wait yeah because generally when you're doing studio work people are like oh yeah this is going to sound like the police or is it going to sound like you too? I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been asked to play like The Edge or uh, the guy from Coldplay. And so that's, uh, uh, you know, that was a huge lesson. And it was pretty much, be kitty at that very moment, my snub switch was off permanently. <laughs> at that moment, I started getting into pop music. And I was a huge Beatle fan. But that was different. Everybody was a Beatles fan. That was, that was a no-brainer. And I was a kid. So... Um, but then by the time I got into, you know, my teens, late teens, I was in early 20s or, or you know, late, late teens. Um, I was really into that was when I was a snob. But I came out here a month after I turned 21 so that I could go to all those clubs. Uh, that's why I waited. Um, I would have loved to move to California when I was 18, but I'm glad I waited until I was 21. But I, I came out, went to a bunch of clubs, drove around L.A., Hollywood, went to Guitar Center in Hollywood, which was amazing at the time and um and i it, you know i knew i felt all automatically immediately felt at home like oh this is where i belong so it was weird and i loved the palm trees and the mountains you know it took me years in pa living in pasadena before i wouldn't just stare at the mountains when i drove on the freeway so dangerous you talk about distracted driving it's just coming from indiana where you don't there is no horizon line you just see sky um and then to see I remember when I drove to, when I moved to California and I had my car packed with everything and I got into Pasadena, like, 
uh, about 10 at night or something. It was dark. It was January. So maybe it wasn't even, it could have been 630 actually. It might not have been that late, but it was dark. And I remember seeing on the, looking on the, driving on the freeway on the 210 and I'm looking to my right, I'm coming from the east and I'm looking to my right and I'm seeing these lights way up there. And, and I'm like, wow, that's a tall building because I'm moving, but you know, when something is up, it's like, you can tell by the how fast something's moving on the horizon line, how tall it is or whatever. And I'm like, I'm looking at these lights. I'm going, dang, that's a tall building. <laughs> and then when the sun came out the next day, I went, oh, <laughs> it's a mountain. So thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Nobody ever plays, everybody plays that fretted, it's open G. Uh, let's see, what else? So yeah, so, so next week we'll probably start doing, I'll, I'll, I'll probably do some lists. We'll, we'll, get, we'll do guitar stuff too. I, I, I mean, the guitar's going to be out, I'll be talking about guitar because I'll be like, oh yeah, check this out. And then maybe I'll, you know, if there's something that is, I feel like is basic enough, I'll show it to you. Um, if, if my memory gets you know, jogged on something, so, um, Mugu Mugu, what's up? probably get going um i think i'm done i'm just getting, i'm getting some emails and texts uh, probably just birthday wishes but i probably should make sure that yeah thanks pepper don't forget to like and um i think we had some pretty good numbers here it got into the like 43 that's pretty darn good because we were getting a little more in the in the mid 30s low 30s so and now we're down we're at 30 right now but um Good. Hopefully there's hopefully there's some good stuff in there for you to use. Again, my, my main goal there, and I, I, I may come back to this. <coughs> I would I would love to do the capo wing at the first fret, and we could do second and, and fourth fret. Those are the main ones I really think of as being getting you out of bad keys. Uh, the second fret is mainly so that if you want to make E or A more, like if you want to make E an intimate key, then capo at the second fret and play D shapes. So we'll so I'll talk about that, and I may do that on Monday. Instead of doing the list, but the list thing just sounds like fun. Um, so, all right, who's calling me? Oh, I think I gotta take this. Hold on a second. Hello. Hi, is this Thomas? <laughs> yeah, this is. Can I? Well, give me one second. Let me sign off on my live stream. <laughs> You're on my live stream. Okay, bye everybody. I'll see you on Monday. Okay, I I, I have a live I do live for the.